Hi everyone, I'm Andrew Murphy from Winthrop Well. Welcome to our latest video. Today I'll be recapping some of the major events of the second quarter, as well as providing context for our outlook and portfolio positioning. The full written version, which goes into a bit more detail, is now available on our website. From an investment perspective, the second quarter of 2020 was far superior to the first, as most asset classes generated strong returns and impressive rebounds. And while this was certainly positive, the pandemic is still having an ongoing impact on all of our daily lives. So most importantly, we hope that you and your families are staying safe and staying healthy. Over the past several weeks, we've enjoyed speaking with many of you through phone calls or virtual meetings to catch up or provide updates to financial plans, the markets, and investment portfolios. Please don't hesitate to contact us if you need anything. At Winthrop Wealth, we are committed to helping you live life to the fullest, and we look forward to speaking with you again soon. And now, let's get to the video. This is a year-to-date chart of the S&P 500, and you can see it's been quite a roller coaster. The market increased by 20.5% in the second quarter and closed at 3,100. So the S&P followed its worst quarterly return since Q4 2008, with the best return since Q4 1998. After declining by almost 34% from February 19th through March 23rd, the market rebounded by over 39% from then to the end of the quarter. The S&P is now down only about 3.1% for the year and about 8% from its all-time high. Equities rallied throughout the quarter due to four main reasons, Federal Reserve actions, fiscal stimulus, positive developments related to the virus, and optimism about the restart of the economy. We welcome the rebound and were able to take advantage of it, but we are prepared for more volatility as the market wrestles with the spread of the virus and the impact of stimulus and medical progress. How can the stock market increase when the economy is doing poorly? We've gotten this question a lot recently, and while they're tied together, the stock market and the economy are two different things. And the key point to remember is that the stock market is a forward-looking discounting mechanism while most economic data is backward looking. Stock market focuses on the future rather than the past or present. There are numerous examples of companies with billion dollar market caps who have never turned a profit. In these cases, investors are forecasting future profitability and discounting those expected earnings to reflect the current stock price. So in today's environment, we know that the current economic data and earnings are weak, but the stock market is discounting a return to future growth and profitability. Here's an overview of the fixed income markets with the Bloomberg Barclays US Aggregate Bond Index, or the AG, in blue, and the 10-year Treasury yield in orange. The AG, which acts as a proxy for the investment grade bond market, increased by 2.9% in the quarter, as the decline in credit spreads was positive for returns. Interest rates, which are at historically low levels, stayed in a narrow trading range as the 10-year Treasury ended the quarter at 0.66%. We also want to highlight the decline in credit spreads throughout the quarter. Credit spreads are defined as a difference in yield between a U.S. Treasury and another type of bond with a similar maturity. And this chart shows the corporate bond market spread in gray and the high yield bond market spread in blue. In a March update, we pointed out several dislocations in the bond market. And at the time, investors rushed to raise cash by selling their most liquid positions, including fixed income securities. And this pushed bond prices down and credit spreads up. And these dislocations exacerbated the decline in the stock market and would have inevitably caused significant damage to the economy. So the Fed responded quickly by announcing several lending facilities, including novel programs to purchase corporate bonds and ETFs. And how much influence does the Fed have over financial markets? Credit spreads started to normalize right after the announcement of the new facilities, but long before the Fed had a chance to implement them. Now let's take a look at what else the Fed has been up to. In response to the pandemic, the Fed established the most accommodative monetary policy environment in United States history. Fed's policies have helped aid the economy, lower interest rates, calm credit markets, and boost equity prices. The Fed has acted in three ways. First, by lowering interest rates. The federal funds rate is currently at a range of 0% to 0.25%. Second, the Fed will continue their quantitative easing program. 
by purchasing both treasuries and mortgage-backed securities, which should help keep long-term interest rates low. Third, the Fed announced 11 new credit and liquidity facilities that are designed to provide stability to the financial system and support the flow of credit to households, businesses, and state and local governments. As a result of these programs, you can see the Fed's balance sheet has increased by nearly $3 trillion this year and now stands at over $7 trillion. Going forward, the Fed is committed to keeping interest rates low, and they will provide more stimulus if necessary to support the economy. The United States entered into an economic recession in February, ending the longest expansion on record dating back to 1854. Given the massive amount of fiscal and monetary stimulus, it's possible that the recession could be the shortest on record. While the number of unemployed people remains high, most of the U.S. economy is in the process of reopening and recent high frequency data are starting to improve. We do expect that the economy will grow in the second half of this year and in 2021, but we acknowledge the virus remains a huge wild card. And with that, let's move to our outlook. Our market outlook is typically based on four segments, monetary policy, economic growth, corporate earnings, and valuation. In the current period, we added data on the coronavirus and fiscal stimulus to help shape our viewpoint. As we move forward, we are balancing the risk of an increased spread of the coronavirus that could necessitate more business closures and put downward pressure on the economy and earnings with a massive amount of fiscal and monetary stimulus and the potential for more progress on treatments and vaccines. So putting it all together, we are maintaining a measured approach, which means keeping client equity and fixed income allocations close to their target levels as determined by their financial plan, while tilting toward areas of value within those asset classes. On the equity side, we are tilted toward high quality U.S. large cap stocks. And on the fixed income side, we remain focused on achieving ballast, stability, and income while accounting for short-term cash flow needs. Key risks in the short term include the spread of the virus, increased tensions between the U.S. and China, and the upcoming elections. We will continue to utilize our time-tested investment process based on risk management, asset allocation, and security selection as we monitor new developments and maintain critical flexibility to take advantage of opportunities as they arise. Thank you for watching today's video. Please visit WinthropWealth.com to view our most recent commentaries including our latest client question of the month on dire market predictions and our principles for investing in the stock market. As always, please let us know if you have any questions and we look forward to speaking with you soon.